This may look like an old piece of driftwood, but did you know that this is actually a piece of reclaimed lumber from a mill that was built over 100 years ago? Well, today we're in Bellingham, Washington in the Pacific Northwest, and we're going to show you how to breathe new life into old timber. When the owners of this seaside home decided to refurbish this old boathouse, they chose to use reclaimed lumber for the rafters and support beams. Judging from the pristine condition of this wood, you would never believe that it spent most of the past 100 years supporting the walls of this old warehouse that was torn down in 1992. At the GR Plume Company, they specialize in reclaiming old lumber that otherwise may have been headed for the trash dump. The first step in reclaiming a piece of lumber is locating and removing all the old nails and screws. So Gordon, how old is this timber? This uh, timber probably came out of a tree uh, a couple hundred years old. I mean, that's the, say, the age of the wood. Now, it was probably cut in the 1920s for the Long Bell Mill in Longview, Washington, when they built their uh, cabinet shop, which was a building about 600 feet by 600 feet. So that would mean this timber was cut about 70, 70 years ago. And uh, so there's two different things when we come up with the age of the wood. But it is old growth, as you can see from the fine grain that you see here, and be a nice piece of wood after it's cut. Using a self-propelled bandsaw, one inch has cut off the face of the old timber. This will reveal the new timber underneath. So Gordon, wood never wears out if you keep it dry. This is like brand new. Oh, that is, except for a couple of these stains of, of its, uh, you know, it previous existence. I mean, I think this is a brand and new wood, and you can see what kind of nice grain that it has. Obviously, we didn't hit any metal because our saw cut nice and straight. <laughs> Tell me a little bit why it's important to use recycled uh, timbers like this. Well, I think it's dry, and, we, and this is what you're going to get in the finished product. I mean, these cracks are going to be what's here, and we can turn this piece, of, uh, like on this piece, up so that these cracks would be out, not invisible, and it's not going to do any more twisting or checking after it's put into place. And plus, uh, we don't have to cut it down any trees to do this. Eventually, one inch will be cut off the remaining three sides of this timber, and it will be made into a 10 by 10 beam. Gordon, if I was guessing, I would say that this is the old timber and this is the new one. But actually, this is a 150-year-old tree that was cut down 100 years ago. This is a 35-year-old tree that was cut down just this year. That is correct. And I think let's talk about the grain here, what that means. Each one of these rings represent one year's growth. And as you can see, this is 35 years. This is 150 years. The closeness of the grain here represents the old growth because this tree had to compete with its brothers in the forest. It had to grow up underneath the trees already grown. This one grew up at the same time as its brothers. So when they talk about um, old growth and second growth timber, really that's what they're referring to is the closeness of the rings? That is correct. Uh, and the old growth, of course, now this piece being cut 100 years ago is going to be more stable. Than, than this piece, which is got, still has its water. It's not dry yet, so this is going to twist, and this one is not going to twist. Yeah, in construction, the whole idea behind using a piece like this is that we know this is not going to go anywhere. That, that's correct, and we also value it for its wonderful grain patterns that you see in this thing, whereas this is going to be much more coarse. Well, you know, it's really hard to believe that this piece of timber here once looked like this and that this 20 years ago would have ended up in a landfill. That, that's, that's correct, but uh, somebody came along and uh, discovered what beauty that they had underneath that. Many of the larger pieces of old growth and second growth lumber are used to build support trusses for lodge style roof systems. Gordon's company also produces a special type of beam called an architectural timber, where several pieces of old growth two by six are glued together and covered with a thin piece of veneer. Well, Gordon, this looks like one solid timber beam, but actually it's several two by sixes laminated together to form one solid beam. That's correct. This is a, what they call a glue lamb, and it's uh, very strong, stronger than a solid timber. And of course, we make it look like a solid timber with, by putting this little thin board over the top of it. Now, the reason you call it a glue lamb is because you're actually laminating with glue several pieces of wood together to make one solid beam. That, that is correct, and it's going to be nice and stable, and it's not going to twist, crack, or check. So the real value of this is, is that you can actually customize these to whatever size you need. You don't have to worry about finding a big tree to, to cut a big beam out of. Oh, that is, that is correct. And then we can make it look on the outside, whatever you'd like it to look, or match anything else that you have in the house. 
So it looks like one nice solid beam. Great looking piece. Cutting new life into old growth timbers and reclaiming 100 year old lumber that could one day form the rafters in your new house.